Okay, so we're back. Low back disability in the flesh. Uh, we are talking about a spicy topic. Might get me canceled. Oh well. Uh, the question I get most often in comments and DMs from people inspired to start training their low back is, does this sort of training work for X diagnosis? Can this fix this problem? Can I do this even though I have X diagnosis, X injury? Um, it's a tricky question, so it's sort of a tricky one to answer that easy and short. I think if I could explain what the real goal is of training the low back and probably what your real problem is of your back pain, then the answer makes sense. And short answer, I'm gonna say yes. Um, but first, I had to realize for myself, after my disc herniation, and you could fill in the blank with whatever it is, herniation, a disc bulge, spondylosis, facet joint syndrome, PARS defect, the infamous DDD, degenerative disc disease, which is just a blanket term of a whole lot of stuff. There's so many different types of tissue in the back, so many different structures, that it can break down in a dozen different ways. This makes it seem more confusing than it is. And so, realizing for me that my back injury was actually a symptom, not the cause of my bad back. So my disc herniation in 2019, I'm sure you guys have heard of it from now. I've made a few videos on it. That herniation was the tip of the iceberg. It wasn't the cause of all my back ailments from then on, even though it seemed like it. And so realizing that whatever injury you're dealing with is likely a symptom of your bad back, not the forever cause, gives the power back to you to realize, well, what is a bad back then? If you're saying my injury isn't the problem, I have this pain, I see an MRI linking it to the pain, how could that not be the problem? It might be the initial situation you're dealing with, but the truth is a bad back, in my opinion, is one that's sensitive, weak, stiff and tight, and these things can be there even without an injury. This is why you can have so much back pain even without an injury. A non-specific back pain is one of the most common types of back pain that doctors see. But even then, the more stiff your back is, the more weak it is, the more mobile it is, the more likely structurally it is to pick up these injuries of disc injury, of the bone stress, of any ligament joint issues in the spine. This stuff only becomes more and more likely. And so when you finally get the herniation after years of achiness, or you finally get the diagnosis of wear and tear all on the spine after chronic re-injuries and just this pain you've been dealing with decades, you can't just blame the incident of the injury for the whole problem. Because then your treatment, if you think that's the problem, then your solution is going to be only focused on that injury, AKA treating symptoms. You can get injections for the pain at that disc bulge. And that may work for a short time there. You can get surgery for this specific area for this specific problem, and that may work for a short time in that area. And this is where people become extremely lost because all of those things are fleeting relievers. They alleviate the smoke, but not the fire that's lending all the pain. And so the problem is your back is stiff, weak, and tight, and your ability is getting worse and worse, which lends you to these injuries. The problem isn't the injury itself. And we can't blame that because then we just can't really solve it we're always treating symptoms. And so that's something I couldn't really understand until I went through it. With my disc herniation, I didn't move my spine at all. I avoided all the flexion and normal twisting movement of life because I became very fearful. And then I started to get something called SI joint pain. And the SI joint isn't even the spine. The SI, sacral ilium, it is where the low back spine connects to the hips. This joint on both sides, it's like deep glute burning. You can show a picture of it on the screen. That's not a spinal injury, not directly. That came from secondary avoidance, fear, dysfunction, tightness in my hips. And that actually lingered for years past my disc herniation. And then I had the hip hike and pelvic tilt. And so my hips were all out of whack and now I had general low back dysfunction and pain. That was no longer just when I bent, ooh, right exact there. Now it was a whole bunch of stuff. I couldn't squat, couldn't deadlift, I couldn't sprint. 
It wasn't just one position that hurt me. But for two, three years, I kept blaming every new pain and injury to that disc herniation. I must still have a disc bulge. It must be because of that. And I all kept going back to the doctor that I saw from the first MRI and what was their suggestion. And no shade and no hate to the doctor doing the best they can. They said, well, we can do surgery for that disc herniation because that's the problem. And the previous solutions of conservative treatment didn't work. So the next step is invasive solutions. Not realizing we identified the wrong problem. My back was stiff, weak, sensitive, untrained, not prepared for life. It didn't matter about the herniation anymore. It's been years. I probably could have had a spontaneous reabsorption, which is where the disc column, the disc reabsorbs back to the spinal column, and that happens a lot. But pain doesn't always go away. And so Maybe that was overly redundant on this point, but I really want to just speak to at least that person who is feeling stuck because they don't realize what the real problem is. You have a low back dysfunction with weakness and avoidance. Anyone who tells you to stiffen up and avoid movement and avoid the troubles of life and not try to get into positions, they're not setting you up to get over the big problem. Your back is weak. You gotta step it up slowly over time. And so, that leads to point two. Point one was that X injury, whatever it is, is a symptom, not the cause. That is a liberating realization if you fully look at it and realize your journey probably fits into that. Two, all tissue in the back is adaptable to differing degrees and different speeds. But I love this image and I always use it with the BBB members. Luca put it on the screen of the healing timelines and you could see nerve, muscle, bone, cartilage, ligament, the x-axis is in weeks and the y-axis is in percentage of adaptability, meaning like if you had a, an injury, how long would that take to heal roughly back to 100% or if you started training today, a new stimulus, how many weeks would it take for you to adapt to that, right? And you can see muscle is much faster than bone and bone is way faster than ligaments and cartilage. And so we didn't even think cartilage healing was possible up until a few years ago. And it's because this adaptability isn't just waiting. You have to actively be stimulating the area. So if you avoid the deep ranges that stimulate cartilage, that stimulate the spine, well then this graph doesn't even apply to you. This 100 week time frame only applies if you're properly stimulating the back slowly but surely at the right level. And so the same way we didn't think cartilage was on here, you don't see discs on this graph, but the outer walls of discs, the annular fibrosis, there's healing inside that disc matrix. They've shown that the outer walls of discs can thicken in response to deep flexion and certain spine training. Of course, if you're injured, you have to be really slow, really careful, or you could do more harm. And so I think eventually with the people getting crazy success stories with training their back, and the shift of training overall, there's going to be new studies in the next 10 years that show maybe the discs are on that even further healing timeline, but they're there. And so, yeah, I mean, this picture did a lot for me because realizing where we think healing is possible is the bone, the muscle, and the nerves, that time frame. And where we used to think, oh, it'll never heal, it's screwed, is in between that gap. You could draw a line right between where people think healing is possible or not. It's the muscles and bones and then the ligaments, cartilage, etc. And that's because you have to train very deep and measurable to the joint, which is scary. And people that haven't done it struggle to coach it because there's so many nuanced regressions. For example, I wouldn't have known that back extension holds was such an important step to healing. I would have just put people straight into reps had I not gone through it myself and known I couldn't even do one rep when I was bad. Someone without a bad back, without a injured back, would look at back extension reps and say, you can do 10. And maybe they could muscularly, but that person that's never been injured doesn't know what it's like to wake up two days later immobilized and you felt like you did nothing. All you did was round your back five times. And so all that to say, I don't even think Overall, as an industry, we even know what's possible for healing. And we're not led to think like this. So that's why this topic is so near and dear to me because it's just mass confusion. 
everything can heal. The bones can heal. You can stimulate so much from the larger muscles, which we talk about, spinal erectors, the QLs, then the very small spinal specific muscles, the interspinalis, rotatoris, multifidus. Each of those play a different role in protecting the spine and movement. Take the facet joint, things like pars defect that I was saying, all these things earlier. This is when the muscles get so bad that then the bones take extra stress. And then it can wear away at the end plates of the bones. You can get thinning of discs. This is DDD now, degenerative disc disease. All of these things are on a spectrum. There's not a light switch. You have them, you don't. It is an onset of weakness growing, of avoidance growing, of weird movement and just instability through normal life. The way you sit starts to change and you start doing it for years. You ever see someone with a crazy limp and you're like, how is it possible that a human being went from walking normal to like throwing half their body around? It's because all this stuff unravels on a spectrum through movement and also just internally, the structures, it's happened so slow. So healing is the opposite. If we want a real solution, we have to understand it has to be on a spectrum. Slow building through tension first, and then motion, and then combine it, heavy loads and through motion in all positions, rounded back, flat back, with deep hip mobility range included, with the seat of good morning, all this stuff has to come slowly, and that is the opposite of how traditional treatment for the low back goes, which is instant relief through a corticosteroid, epidurals, surgery. It's instant intervention, which gives you some sensation immediately, but then long term, it didn't change your trajectory. It didn't put you on that healing timeline that we were showing of tissue adaptability. So. That's just my opinion. I think I should have said this way earlier. This is not medical advice. This is entertainment. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I hope you're being entertained. <laughs> Don't sue me. But as someone who went through it, I'm not an expert, just trying to be real. Uh, this is a missing part of healing for the low back. And so first is understanding that whatever injury, injury you have, it is a symptom of your bad back, not the cause. Which means the cause being your weakness, tightness, avoidance, fear, you can improve those things, which is extremely empowering. Two, all tissue in the back is adaptable from the muscle to the bone to the ligaments, arguably discs long term. Just understand that the deeper the dysfunction, the longer it's going to take and the more patient you have to take. And that's okay. Life is long and we're going to use our backs every day of our lives. So we're just going to change the direction. And that matters more than a destination. Directional changes win over time. And then three, the grand just recap of all this is knowing that it is not hopeless if we can fix our aim. Let's not fix the injury. Asking do back extensions fix the disc herniation is just the wrong question. It doesn't really matter. There's back extensions gradually over time get rid of my pain, give me more mobility and use of my spine with less damage happening to it because I can now own those positions with strength. If all those things are in place, if disc healing is possible, you have the best shot now because you're not throwing all this weird load improperly through the muscles and joints because you're weak. You're giving synovial fluid, all the lubrication that goes to joints the best chance and you're stimulating the disc walls gradually. So if, if healing that disc is possible, you're doing everything you can. And two, even if you don't heal the disc, but you can move your back, you have no pain, you're strong, you can lift, you can run, you can play with your kids, does it even matter that you have a disc herniation? It doesn't matter to me. I haven't had an MRI. People ask me all the time. And I don't because my point has never been to heal the injury. My point has been to go back to not even thinking about your low back and just being grateful for life and not worrying about defining yourself as an injured athlete or whatever the identity is we carry, it's tough. But we have to fix our aim that we need pain-free ability. I'm able to do more things with less pain and that puts all the power back in our hands. Whereas the other route leaves you guessing and chasing. 
you, f you get this massage, feels a little better, but then this pain pops up. You get this injection, it helped out there, but something else popped up. You get an alignment every two weeks and you're, you're feeling better, but then something else pops up. And you're gonna be putting out all these little points of smoke and a new fire. There's fire brewing everywhere. Like the actual injury went nowhere. And that is going to feel like bad luck, which I don't think is really going on for most of us. And so, of course, this episode was longer. It was a nuanced talk. Uh, there's a lot of generalizations. So I'm bound to be wrong on a few things for sure. But the overall message I want to take and, and give to you is just that you are the solution. You have your back to live with every day, and you're going to get very familiar with it through training it. And that trajectory actually makes sense. Where the other one of fixing isolated problems in the deepest area of our body doesn't make sense. It's not isolated. And it didn't just happen overnight. Unless you trained your back your whole life and then you had a car wreck and something happened crazy. But even then, you're pretty likely to bounce back really fast with that foundation of back training. So through all the, the grand claims and, you know, I didn't mean to make any of this polar or, you know, I don't know, just a hot topic. I know it can get emotional for people because our lives can be consumed with pain and it hurts to like hear, wait, what do you mean? I'm just not doing the right stuff. I did everything. I tried everything I was supposed to. And this guy's 25, 26 and trying to tell me what the answer is. I get it. And so I hope that some of this really resonates with you and you can think about your journey and try to piece some of the clues together and get training on your back on the slow, steady route, playing the long game and going for the right solution. So low back ability, that's why it's the name. I appreciate y'all tuning into this episode. I'll catch y'all tomorrow.